Now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo... In the sixth floor suite of the Westboro Hotel, John Steed pulled aside a small picture. They still put wall safes behind pictures. Shockingly unoriginal. Well... Steed shot his cuffs with a deliberately exaggerated movement of his elbows, flexed his fingers, and pressed his ear to the dial of the safe. Mm, piece of cake. Nothing to it. The safe door swung open. Steed reached inside and found banknotes, bundles of them. He counted them swiftly, grinned, replaced them neatly, closed the safe, replaced the picture, and made to leave the room. A slight noise came from the window which was open. The curtains billowed out. From under the curtains poked a pair of man's highly polished shoes and a couple of inches of trouser leg. Steed froze in his tracks. Caught in the act, Steed. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 3 of this story, in which John Steed gets more involved in the affairs of Colonel Aristides, and Emma Peel finds herself facing death. Straight from the shoulder. John Steed had been suspicious of the return of Colonel Aristides to London. Steed knew that the Colonel wanted to buy arms, and in particular, to get his hands on the new FF-70 a secret high-powered rifle. Steed and Mrs. Peel both knew there was a serious leakage of information and that the people behind it were killers. Mrs. Peel had already met trouble at the hands of a sharp-shooting young thug called Conrad who tried to crash her car. They'd traced the whole party to Aristides' London Hotel and while Mrs. Peel kept a watchful eye on the hotel lobby, Steed searched Aristides' suite. The safe had been an easy matter, but who was behind the curtains watching Steed's every move? Steed didn't wait to find out. He lifted a large book from the colonel's desk and threw it at the bulge in the curtain, dropping down out of gunshot. The figure behind the curtain jackknifed forward. The curtains ripped apart. There was a crash. A heavy object rolled across the carpet and stopped by Steed's hand. It was a man's head. In plaster. A tailor's dummy. Decapitated, too. Nasty omen for someone. Well, let's have a look at the rest of the dummy. <laughs> Military uniform. Resplendent new uniform. Gold braid, blue sash. A general's uniform. Now, what does that mean? Well, thanks for certain. I'm not stopping here to find out. Wise man. For along the corridor at that moment came Colonel Aristides with Giles, the loathsome henchman of his... Outside the door, they stopped. I don't think I left this door unlocked, Giles. Mm -hmm. Get in there. I'll see to it. Mm -hmm. <sighs> no one here. It's the dummy. My uniform. Could the wind have caused that? I somehow don't think so. Giles, search the place. Search the whole suite. Quickly. Steed had slipped out of the other door while they were entering the main one. He walked swiftly down a flight of stairs and took the lift to the lobby. Mrs. Peel demanded food and got it. Any progress? Found out a few things. Aristides has got exactly 200,000 pounds in the safe upstairs. To buy FF-70 rifles? Probably. That's not all. He's having a new uniform made. Well, I can't blame him for that. 
Bond Street's still one of the best places in the world, natural enough. Except that the badges of rank show our colonel has been promoted. Oh, he must be pleased. Pleased with himself. Uniforms smothered with cross swords and he's got five stars. A general? Oh, even higher in the colonel's country. Army commander of the islands, sky blue sash of unique guardian of the people's freedom. But uh, that's only worn by the president of the republic, surely. Quite. Our colonel is obviously planning to do his own promoting. Mm, with new arms. With FF-70 rifles, he's bound to win. So he's planning a coup. Have you done anything about investigating the factory where the rifles are made? I thought about it as your first job tomorrow. Charming of you. There is the small problem of getting into any top-secret establishment. They're not normally cooperative. Well, we'll get Mother to fix it. We'd better think of some good cover. Uh, swing it round, make it look like publicity. Uh, take an ad agency photographer and a dolly model, and that'll put everybody off the scent. Meanwhile... Meanwhile? Let's order some more champagne and have a decent meal. Mm, you owe me it. Mother will pay him. He doesn't know it, but he usually does. Cheers, Mrs. Spiel. <laughs> And that was how Mrs. Peel came to arrive at the factory of Thrupp and Withenshaw the next morning. Is this the place? That's right. Absolutely no admittance without authorization. Oh, gosh, what an assignment. Passes, please. Here you are. All in order. Mrs. Peel drove through and parked her car alongside a pile of packing cases. The two advertising people climbed out. <laughs> oh, darling, I can't model here. Mrs. Peel walked across to an open warehouse. A burly man with a checking sheet in his hand came over and demanded... Now, look here. What the devil's going on? Publicity. I have full authority. I don't care what authority you've got. It's I from don't... the ministry, Mr... Uh, Paxton. I'm, I'm in charge of distribution. Good. Then you can let me have an assortment of rifles. This has got the minister's signature on it, as you can see. Anything in those cases will do? No, 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 and uh, not those. Uh, they're already checked. I'll find you something. Um, uh, wait, wait, wait there. Paxton moved off into the shed. He hadn't gone far when Conrad stepped out of the shadows. Hurry it up, Paxton. We're leaving in five minutes. You can't take the crates. It's all too risky. Look, we need the assignment, Paxton, like you need this money. Conrad thrust a hefty envelope at Paxton, who grabbed it eagerly. Uh, you, uh, you could load up tomorrow. I could change shifts so that you'll, you'll be all right. We need the stuff now. But there's something fishy going on. Two birds have just arrived, and a fellow with a camera. They're taking photographs. If they get a shot of us together... Which two girls? There, outside the shed. You see them? Get up on the table, dear. And remember, they right. keep fluid. I'll try my best hmm. to make a wash part there. It's that one again. Fluid. The one with a car. Yeah. All right, you can go I'll take care of things, Paxton. The van's all ready. Two of my men are waiting for the signal. I'll attend to this girl, and it'll be a pleasure. But by the time Conrad had got outside, Mrs. Peel had disappeared. She left the advertising couple to get on with things and slipped silently along the side of the warehouse. At the other end, she spotted Paxton beside Conrad's truck. There were two men loading. One of them came towards her. He held a gun in one hand. Mrs. Peel didn't wait for him. She backed down a side alley, but the other man headed her off. Mrs. Peel realized she was trapped. Mrs. Peel caught the second man with a sound butt in the stomach. The first man raised his gun and fired. The shot went wild and Mrs. Peel moved in. She got a good grip and threw the man into some packing cases. Mrs. Peel was about to head up the alley to Conrad's van when... Stay where you are, hands high in the air, please. Conrad was standing on a stack of crates, his legs astride, his stance almost casual. But he had an FF-70 tucked in his shoulder, the sights trained on Mrs. Peel. She stared up at the barrel and knew this was a man who never missed. <laughs> While Mrs. Peel was experiencing all this excitement, John Steed went back yet again to the Westboro Hotel. This time, he called Colonel Aristides first and was shown into the suite by the surly-looking Giles. Morning, Giles. Top of the morning to you. Giles' scowl deepened. 
He went to take Steed's bowler and umbrella. Ah, uh, no, I'll hold on to these. Never know when one might want them, you know. Morning there. Morning, Steed. Have you come to show me the sights of London? Uh, not exactly, General. Just as well. I'm off down into the country for a few days. Uh, what is all this, uh, general stuff? My rank is not all that exalted. Ah, ah well then, I'm anticipating events, Colonel. Uh, congratulations would probably be out of order at the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be vague, Steed. Out with it, my old friend. We've always been frank with each other. Invariably so, yes. So please, speak your mind. Well, my tailor would have a fit if I asked him to put a blue sash and all that scrambled egg over my uniform. <sighs> I see. But surely, you're not here to talk of uh, clothes. Come on, old chap. You can tell me. Are you short of a little ready change, or maybe you're uh, temporarily between jobs? No, no. As a matter of fact, I've just taken a new job. I thought I'd call round and tell you about it. Uh, and uh, what job is it? A sort of buying agent. Buying what? Uh, same as you, Colonel. Guns. Uh, but mine are for your president. He's a bit worried that the coup d'etat season is fast approaching. He wants to get ready for it. As I had the honor to help him gain the presidency. Uh, you remember, Colonel, that was when we first met again after school? I volunteered to see what I could get him. Interesting. Isn't uh, it? I, uh... I didn't know that you were still in touch with the president. Oh, we've never missed a Christmas card yet. Well, I, I won't keep you if you're going into the country. Bye for now. With an airy wave of his umbrella, Steed left a rather worried colonel to prepare for his visit to Lady Adriana Beardsley. Mrs. Peel was already down at Stokely. In there, and no tricks. Quickly now. Old English hospitality. Charming manners from the lower classes. Adriana! Come and be Mrs. Emma Peel and tell me what you would like me to do with her. Anything goes. Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo.